Hi, my name is Sam Ben Yaakov. The title of this presentation is Design of Flyback Converter Magnetics, the AP Approach. This presentation is actually divided into two parts. In the first part, I'm going to give the sort of cookbook recipe, the final, the bottom line, and the formulas uh, that would allow the direct design of the magnetics for a flyback converter, the coupling duct. The second part explains how the equation were actually derived from very basic uh, relations. The material presented in this presentation is actually based on some fundamental concepts which are given in these two YouTube clips that uh, you can get to. I'm also going to print the links, comments uh, of this video. A coupled inductor for a flyback will be wound on a gapped core. This will be a ferrite usually, or it will be a distributed gap core, which I'm not going to discuss in this presentation. Now, the parameters of the core are the following. We have the magnetic path length, this is LE. We have the gap length, LG. We have the window cross area, this is where the windings are getting, and it's supposed to be, and we want it to be filled with the wires to utilize the core. And then we have the cross section of the core, here it is, and this is AE, the area, winding area is AW. Now the core will be wound with other two windings, or more, depending whether you have one output or a number of out. Basic equation for the design is this AP. The AP is the product of the core cross section, area and the window winding window area the product of these are given by this formula the nice thing about this formula of this equation is that it contains all parameters that you are supposed to get from the electronic design of the circuit let's go over the uh, parameters l1 will be the inductance of the primary winding. I'm doing the calculation from the, for the winding at the primary, although uh, one can go in to the calculation for any one of the winding, but it's more convenient to do it for L1. This is the winding of the primary. So this will be the inductance. This will be the peak current of the primary. These are the turns ratio between the primary and all other the winding. That is, if there's only two windings, it'll be uh, between the N2 and N1. And these are the RMS value of the currents of all the windings, each one of the windings. And B maximum, B max, is the flux density that you have set as the maximum value that you wish the core to reach. Now, this will be is sometimes related to saturation, but in most of the time it will be related to power dissipation because the larger the Bmax and the larger the delta B, that is the ripple of, of uh, the flux density, the higher will be the uh, core losses. Now there are then two other parameters in this equation. One is J, which is the current density of the wire that you allow, and it has to do with the thermal uh, heating, and it will be the power dissipation due to the resistance of the wire. The thinner the wire, the larger the resistance. A good number to start will be 4.5 ampere millimeter. Now note that this equation, and the numbers I'll uh, show later on, are for the SI units, so uh, lengths are in meters. So if there is a uh, parameters given in a millimeter, one should convert it, of course, to meters. And then there is the fill factor, which stands for the fact that when you are winding into the uh, winding area, there are some voids here. Here's the winding inside the core, and uh, 
Consequently, you cannot utilize all the area. You can improve if you have a square wire, but for round wires and even for square wires, uh, K will always be smaller than 1. Uh, a number, a reasonable number is 0.7, depending on the method of winding, where, what type of machine you're using, or maybe it's hand winding. And uh, uh, so this takes care of this inconsistency between the actual area and the area that you can use. So here is this, this equation, and let me just go over uh, the right side of this equation. We have the inductance, peak current. This is the sum of this product of turns ratio between a given winding and the first one times the RMS of this particular I winding. And then we have B max, and then we have the J, which is the current density, and K, the field factor. So once you have all these from the design of the electronic circuit, you decide on this, and on this, you estimate the field factor. You go ahead and calculate AP. Now, you go and decide what type of core you wish to have, uh, what type of material, etc. I'm not going into all these uh, details here. And you sort of look at catalogs. For given core, and here is an example, a specific core of ferrous tube. There's no endorsement here. Uh, it, it's just an example. This is half of an E core. The other half, of course, will go uh, something uh, like this over it to complete the E core. And the windings, of course, are going over here. Now, you look at this variety of cores available and you look for one that will have an AP that you have calculated or larger than that, not certainly not smaller. Usually the AP will be given here as the information about the bobbin. This is the element you use actually to do the winding on it and it goes the core sort of sits inside the core. Okay? And here you see it here, let me just uh, enlarge it here. Um, here it is, area product, AE times AW. Now, this is again in millimeter to the fourth, because this area times area, it's a kind of a strange uh, number. Uh, remember that we are working in the SI unit, so it should be in meters. A millimeter is 10 to the minus 3 meters. So you have to take this number and multiply it by 10 to the 3 times 4, that is 10 to the minus 12. Okay, so you finished selecting the core. Now you go back to the specific core that you have chosen, and you look for information about this specific core that you would need later on for the design, for the continuation of the design. One will be the magnetic path length, effective length here. This is the magnetic path length. Here is the number, again, it's a millimeter. You have to convert it to meters. And also the area, effective area, cross-section area of the core. Here it is, OK? Another number that would be important in the design would be the mass. This is the how much does it weigh. This is important for thermal estimations. Um, because the information given by a manufacturer are heat dissipation per either a gram or centimeter to the third cube centimeters, so that you need this number for estimating the uh, power dissipation of the core, which we are not uh, discussing in here. Okay, so you got these uh, two numbers, and then you go on and calculate the number of turns of the first winding. Um, from this equation. You know the inductance, you know the peak number, you know the beam maximum you set, and you've just found what is the AE of your specific core. Okay? Now, you go ahead and calculate the permeability that you'd need for your design. Again, L1 is given, 
N1 you've just found, AE from the catalog, and LE also you found uh, in the catalog, and so you can calculate what should be mu. Okay? Now, mu is the product of mu sub zero, which is a vacuum uh, permeability, times the relative permeability. Now, this number, of course, is, is known, it's a constant, so you can calculate what is the relative permeability from the mu you calculated and from vacuum permeability. Then you can go ahead, there is an approx this is an approximate e equation to calculate what is the gap that you would need for this particular core, knowing the magnetic path length, you know the relative permeability you just calculated here, and uh, you know what is the, the core. Now the wires that you need for each one of the, of the uh, my next is, of course, depending on the RMS, which you know, J that you have decided. This is the, the cross-section area of the wire of each one of the windings. So this actually uh, finalized the uh, design, uh, starting from information you know from the uh, electronic circuit design, and then throughout these equations, uh, you can get all the information that you need, and go ahead, you know now the number of turns for the primary, form a turn ratio of Ni over N1, you can calculate the number of turns for all the windings, and that actually completes uh, the design. For the gap, you can either use the approximate equation that uh, I've given earlier, or in fact, you can for the same core, the same one that you, we've sort of chosen for this particular example, uh, you can order a gapped a core. Uh, here are the, the, the gap lengths, but more important, you got the relative, this is actually mu, we call it relative permeability. So suppose in your calculation, we have found that we need a a relative permeability of 100 about, and then this will be the catalog number for this particular half core that uh, you need uh, in order to build your construction. Next, I'm going to uh, sort of go over uh, the derivation of, of the equation that I've uh, shown before. We start with the saturation limit, that is, we have to make sure that in the uh, element, magnetic element that we design, we will not exceed a B maximum that we decide on. This will be, in most cases, actually related to uh, heat dissipation. For very, very low frequencies or relatively low frequencies, uh, it'll be sort of close to saturation. We start with the uh, state space for the voltage for the inductor and then the relationship between the volt and the uh, rate of change of flux, magnetic flux. These two are equal, so we equate them. We take the integral on each side, we get this expression for which we can get the cross area section that will make sure that you are not exceeding B maximum given this, this, and this, okay? So, from this equation also, we can sort of get uh, the, if we know AE, if we would know it, then we can calculate the number of terms. A second consideration that we have to take into account in the design is the uh, target of filling up all the winding area as much as possible. This is to utilize the core uh, in the optimum way. Now we start with the definition of the current density, which is the RMS current of a winding times the cross-section area of the winding. Here it is, cross-section area of the winding. And from which the cross-section area can be expressed as IRMS over J. Now, if we have n number of turns in a particular winding eye, 
then it'll be ni and it's a byte times the area of the wire, the, the area cross-section area of the wire. Divided by k is the fill factor, which takes into account that we just cannot fill all the area and there are some voids and we have to take this into account. Now, the total area, winding area of, of the core will be then the sum of the area occupied by each one of the terms, each one of uh, the, the windings. Okay? So we have now an expression for a W, and therefore we can go ahead and uh, find out what is AP. Again, this is the full expression for the one of the windings, the area of one of the windings. This is the sum. Now, uh, it turns out that it is like N1 over JK and then the sum of NI over N1 times I RMS. This is for sort of adding up all the contribution of the various windings. AE we have found before, now we multiply the two, and uh, actually this should be N1, I'm sorry. So this actually cancels out, and here is the expression that we have found uh, for the AP. So this is the way that this equation is uh, derived. Aside from the actual design that I've shown here and earlier, there are additional issues that must be taken into account uh, from the uh, practical engineering point of view. I, I'll just mention them. I'm not going into them into detail. One, will be, one of them would be the thermal issues, wire resistance heating up of the wire, core thermal dissipation. Then we have emission problems. Uh, we have a gap, and this gap radiates, so it'll be advisable to put perhaps a shield so uh, to uh, protect a little bit against this uh, radiation. And then we have uh, safety issues, uh, which have to do with uh, insulation, and then distances between wires and the air. So these are the practical aspects that need to be taken into account uh, before a core can actually uh, be used. This brings me to the end of this presentation. I hope you enjoyed it and you will find it useful in the future.